So I am going to call the meeting to order. And uh, as uh, per usual, um, looking for any disclosures of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof from anybody attending tonight. And <clears throat> excuse me, if not, then I'm gonna call for a motion for the adoption of the previous minutes. If everybody got a chance to look at them, can I get a motion and a seconder please? Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> motion, Jeff, second, Laura, thank you. All right, so we'll move to the meeting. Sorry, I have to fiddle with my laptop here. Okay. We have um, a delegate um, from the city who would like to talk to us about um, a sign bylaw exemption. This is something we don't see too often on this committee, but it's important to know that um, it is part of the remit of this committee to talk about some of the sign bylaw um, standards, if you like. And so I'm going to hand it over to Kelton Frey um, Kelton did send out some information through Casey um, earlier about the sign, but if you could just give us a quick rundown, Kelton, uh, of what the issue is and what your, your ask is of Heritage Stratford. Yeah, thank you. Um, so staff received a sign variance for 35 Waterley Street North uh, to add five sign frames on the city owned fence along Waterloo Street, William Street, and Elizabeth Street. Um, an encroachment agreement is required for the signs to be affixed to that fence. As for the zoning of this property, the only sign allowed is one address sign, which there currently is on the corner of Waterloo Street and William Street. So, um, I completed a site visit to see if sight lines would be affected and found no issues with sight lines in regards to pedestrian and vehicular traffic. Um, the sign frames will be made from a stained cedar lattice and be mounted on the fence. The signs themselves will be made of vinyl and affixed to that frame. Uh, city staff will not have discretion over what messages are displayed and for what length of time they will be staying up for as this is classified as a change copy sign. Um, the Planning and Heritage Committee has referred this sign variance application um, to the to this Heritage Stratford Advisory Committee uh, for their consideration and input. Um, I am going to share my screen um, to give you a little overview from what has been proposed to us. So this is the Falstaff Family Center. Um, the, this will be the sign frame with the wood lattice. This is where it's to be located um, in these five locations here. Survey. So here's um, uh, an example of what they're going to be um, proposing to be put on these signs. Um, so the here for now theater company, um, some political um, messages or shirt day. Uh, here for now theater company. Yes. So um, as the, uh, oh, sorry, let me try and get back in here. So after um, the committee, <clears throat> the Planning and Heritage Committee meeting yesterday, um, they wanted it deferred um, here to get input from, from you guys on, on what you think um, will be a good fit for that location. Could you show the uh, image where the signs would be located? You had a... Yeah, for sure. How many signs are we talking about? Sorry. So there will be <clears throat> um, five permanent frames on the fence, 
and they will be allowed to change the copy of those signs as to what they're saying. Right. Okay. So there was, okay. So there's a, I'm just looking, there's a type over there, two, three, four, five. Where, so how large are these? Because the way they're being shown, the red, okay, so they're not all this size. Some of them are larger. Yeah, so this is um, 1.22 meters by 1.52 meters. And then the larger ones are uh, 6.8 meters long. Um, I can't see the other side there, by about 1.4 meters high. So where are the long ones located? So those long ones will be uh, sign type A, A, sign type A. Okay, and then we have a sign type B and a sign type C. Okay, I didn't know what the difference between C is that way. Okay, and B looks like? B. B is tall. B, B and C are relatively the same, other than um, B is just a little bit bigger, yeah. has okay. 2.13 meters. Are the um, are these being rented? So okay. are this? I, I mean, uh, is the the property owner is the one requesting these signs or? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Are they going to lease these out and you know that space so for advertisement purposes so that you pay to have your advertisement there? Yeah, so it's my understanding it will be just for the tenants that are in there. Um, they hear for now theater company and the multicultural um, association. And then I believe this sign type A here will be for um, the owner to, to advertise whatever political um, or whatever they want there. So the here for now theater company or these type of signs, the orange. Oh, okay, so 1.68 meters is that's how tall they all are. That's how tall the fence is. That's how tall the fence is. And what is that? That's three, four, four feet? Correct. Four feet, okay, okay. Sorry, it, just to jump in there, I just wanted some clarification because I, I, I didn't just wanted to know the whole scope before we talk about it more. No, that's true. Um, these are in a, it's, it, this building is in a residential neighborhood um, that really doesn't allow for these kinds of signs. Um, is there, has there been any um, involvement of the neighbors? Do they know that this is proposed? Um, so those who are sort of overlooking this or might be impacted by it, that way? So it's my understanding um, whether it has been done to, um, to get input from our minds, yes. Okay. Um, and Danielle, you had. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was just going to answer that for you. But yes, they did um, actually send a letter to all of the property owners. I think there was something like 135 um, okay. property owners that they sent letters to about the signage. And I don't believe um, the city received any feedback. Is that correct, Kelton? That is correct. We didn't. Is, is, uh, uh, he's breaking up a any bit. feedback. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I don't know. You're breaking up just a little bit, Kelton. Okay, sorry about that. Um, we we didn't receive any feedback from any residents um, showing any concerns with it. Yeah, I don't believe this property impacts um, designated buildings. I should have checked to see if non-designated list um, would be impacted by it. Um, sorry, Miranda. Um, but that was just the other question I had. Um, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just, that was, you know, just the other thoughts that I had about this. 
Uh, I have a couple questions. Um, is there a certain time frame that these are going to be, the signs are going to be there for? Um, is it like a, is it a, is it a limited period of time or is it indefinite or is it, you know, a, you know, one, two years, five year kind of um, uh, allowance? So after speaking with the applicant, um, they had stated that there is going to be lots of times where there is no signage up there and it's just an empty frame. Um, we cannot control that. They would be issued a permit for the sign frames only and we can't control how long they have them up for or anything like that because a simple change in the copy or the message Okay, you're breaking up again, Kelton, at least for me. No, yeah, for me as well. Uh, it does not require a permit. So the other issue, Kelton, was that uh, the fence itself is on city property and not owned by the Fall Stop Center. Is that correct? Sorry, can you hear me? Sorry, you froze again. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, sorry, could you repeat the question? I'm just having some yeah. connectivity. So the, my question was that the, the other issue here is that the fence involved is not owned by the Falstaff Center. It is actually on city property, correct? That's correct. And they would have to enter into an encroachment agreement with the city. Would the city not have any uh, ability to um, have a say over what these signs look like? You know, if, if there's going to be an agreement between the city and the property owner, wouldn't the city be able to have a, a bit of say in what these signs would look like? So we cannot, we, we can't, all we do is um, permit the size, the type of sign, the area of the sign. There's no way for us to limit what they can say on it. Okay. The material then, I guess, I guess because the, the signs would be frequently changed, they're looking for a type of material that is, can be changed easily, but often so that kind of sign is not, I, I don't know, it's, it's not always the highest quality sign because it's something that gets changed uh, frequently. So, um, yeah. One thing I did want to mention about the Fall Staff Center is that it's a part four designated property. Is that correct? Can somebody? I believe the Falstaff Center is designated, yes. That's a part four, okay. Yeah, I, none I, of the buildings around it are, but it is. No, I think though, if I remember correctly, because I worked on the designation for that property, I think the forecourt is part of the reasons for designation. So the forecourt being that um, park area in front of it is recognized as part of the reason for designation and I guess my my hesitation here is that these kind of um, signs may take away from that um, I guess the beauty of the of the site and the the I guess heritage look and feel of the site and these signs would start to become like an, an advertisement look. Um, so I guess that that would be my concern. I mean, if they were permanent signs and they were ones that were wood and they were of a you know, certain quality and they're, they're there and, you know, and there was a bit of um, ability to have some say in what they looked like then 
you know, that would be another conversation, but right now it's something that would be likely frequently changed. There's no copy control. Um, it would just start to look like advertisements. And I appreciate the fact that that's what, you know, they're trying to advertise what's going on in the, the building. And I appreciate that need. So that, that would be my, my comment right now. Barb? Um, is that not what they're already doing, only without the frames? Don't they already hang signs on the fence? Am I wrong? I thought I saw, I thought that's what I've seen. So like would these frames make it look nicer because they would be framed at least? I don't know. I just maybe I don't go by there frequently enough. Um Kelton. Uh so those signs that have been um seen up there, um, they have been prohibited um and are done without uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Um, does anybody have any other input or thoughts on this matter? Robin? Um, I think I missed the vertical height of some of the more uh, upright orientated uh, sign types. But I think uh, if they were kept within the existing fence height, that's kind of a nice format nice way to advertise bits of this, bits of that. I think if they were more vertical or creeping above that fence height, it would start to feel more like billboard row. Um, but I mean, even if the entire fence were filled, it could be a nice, could be a nice format for advertising this or that. And it, it keeps it low, it's a bit of color. It's just as long as they stay down in a residential area, I think. Okay. Anybody else? Danielle, please. Yeah, so um, I, I missed some of the discussion last night at council, but the concern was that back in 2012, um, the, there was a request to have two additional signs on this property, and it was denied by Planning and Heritage Subcommittee, as well as Heritage Stratford and um, council because they were concerned that it was going to take away from the aesthetics of the heritage building. So that's why it has come back to you um, because there were some counselors questioning um, why we would be allowing this to happen when we said no in 2012 and they're asking for more signs this time. Um, I think part of, I think that the culture has changed and I think the use of the property has changed. And as the property has evolved and you've got other uses, you know, making space, making use of the outdoor space, not just the in interior space. Um, the evolution ha of the property has changed. And so my position was, you know, the, the signs, as uh, Robin has just said, they, they are contained along the fence. They don't Im impose on the building. They don't impose on the use of the property. They're not covering any of the heritage features. Yes, your sight lines might be obstructed, but um, the building itself, the use of the property, none of that is being obstructed. Um, it's in a residential area, but none of the none of the signs are proposed to be backlit. They're not proposed to be electronic, um, changeable copy, anything like that. Like, and the frames will um, contain the size of the sign that they can actually post, right? So they can't extend the signs beyond the frames. They can't add additional ones. Like what, what they're um, applying for is basically what they get and they can just change the copy just like other businesses within Stratford change copy on signs. Um, so the, I think the difference here is that there is some concern over the political messaging that that's, they are sometimes posting. Um, there is concern that they are advertising a number of different businesses and opportunities that are utilizing this space, such as Here For Now Theater. Um, they have the middle year school that ha is uh, posted a sign on the property. But I, I don't know how that's any different really if you have a freestanding sign in a plaza that advertises every single use within that plaza, right? 
it's just that in a plaza, you have a freestanding sign where you have everything all kind of in a row vertical. This one is just kind of spread out horizontally on the fence. Um, so, so that's where I, I kind of see the differences. There is a little bit of concern um, from council members about the signage in a residential neighborhood because that has not been permitted before. But again, this property is a bit unique because it was a formal, former institutional use and it has been converted and an adaptive reuse is a good thing for you know efficient use of land and, and having all of the, these incubator spaces and that kind of thing. Um, so I, I don't know that there's may, very many other properties in Stratford where this particular situation might cause a precedent to form. Um, so, you know, I, my position was that I was okay with it last night at council. If you guys have some concern from a heritage perspective, I can backtrack and I can totally support your position. Um, but that's, that's a little bit of the background. Um, in terms of my positioning, um, I, I was concerned about the neighbors that seems to have been covered. Um, I was also concerned about sight lines driving, but I think it's okay, particularly as you come off Williams Street. That's a pretty large sign there, but it's not really obstructing anything. Um, I guess I was also concerned just about the number of signs. Five seemed an awful lot. Um, so, you know, one of my thoughts was to reduce the impact of this and not make it, as Robin says, sort of billboard row, um, maybe look at um, a lesser number, because I'm not quite sure why you need five. Um, I understand why they want one as you're coming um, up Wellington, because it's right there. I think it's Wellington. Um, and then as you're coming around the corner on morning to and like, you know, the north south access being able to see, you know, the here and now theater, for instance, which I can understand that they want to advertise their season. So that was just my other comment was the number of them seemed to, to me to be a bit excessive and would detract potentially from the building. But you're right, Danielle, it is quite a unique property um, at this point. Um, but um, it may set a precedent, you can never know. You can just not know. But that was really, was, it was really the number, I think more than anything that I thought was a bit uh, over the top. I don't know if, what anybody else thinks. Jeff, if you have any opinions. Sorry, having trouble unmuting. Um, yeah, I, I think if you would have asked me yesterday if there were signs on, Fence, I would have said yes, because um, you know, I, I, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of a situation where it would really sort of take away from the attributes that are, you know, the forecourt and the, the existing building. And I, I, I don't see that, especially if it's got uh, support of the neighbors. Um, I, I understand the political uh, nature that, uh, of the signs that might cause concern, um, but, you know, I, yeah, I, I I think I would support uh, support it. Um, just the, I think the benefits of the center operating the way it is uh, outweigh you know potential you know drawbacks down the line. Thanks, Jeff. Um, and I guess I'll just jump to Barb. Do you have any thoughts or you'd like to share? I I think I agree with Jeff. I I don't. I feel like I see signs there all the time, so I'm. I've never been offended by their signs. I never feel like it looks bad or anything. If anything, it kind of looks more like a school again with the signs there. So framing them doesn't bother me. I agree. Five is probably a lot. If they'd asked for four, maybe we wouldn't be as hesitant. I don't know, but I I think I'm okay with it. I think we need to note, Kelton, let's take Robin's input, billboard row <laughs> as a potential wanting to maybe reduce that number. I don't think any of us have too much of a problem with the signs. I know the city will want some kind of 
uh, usage of the fence to be addressed, but I think from, from this committee, um, you're getting uh, general approval and yeah, just maybe- yeah. Can know. I jump in there, Cambria? Um, so I'm still hesitant. Okay. Um, I, I, I support the uh, position that you mentioned about reducing the number of signs, but also I would reduce the, the size. There's a couple, the, those long signs seem to be excessive. Um, and so I would be looking to reduce the number of signs and the size. Okay, and isn't there a sign already at the corner uh, yes. that, that um, tells what's in the building? You know, that it, it, it's a sign for the building. So what more do these signs add? I think, Kelton, you had a picture that had a sample of the new signs, but it also showed the existing wooden sign that's in the ground. Um, if you just want to quickly share your screen, maybe we can see that. Because I know that that you're absolutely right, Laura. There is a, there is a sign um, on the corner of the building at Williams Street. Right. And, and I thought that that was sufficient. I, I guess sufficient to be able to advertise what was in the building. Um, it says what the building is, as far as I know. It's, um, just, it's just the name of the building. It doesn't say what events are happening there. It's just that it's the Fall Staff Center. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, not seeing your screen. Yeah. Kelton, I don't see if anybody else can, but I think it just says the, the Fall Staff Center. I don't think um, you're, you're going to be able to share your screen. So let's just go back and yeah, it's just a sign that says the Fall Staff Center. So if you look at the document that um, Casey sent us, the photo of it's in there. Okay. Yeah. So there's no, the city, again, the city won't have any um, say over the copy that goes on there. So how would the city... I mean, how is there concern that copy would go up there that might not be appropriate or anything like that? I guess I'm just I'm trying to be kind of cover off potential issues in the future. Um, like I thought, like with some of those long signs, what could happen is that you have a bunch of small signs that get attached to this big long sign because not everybody wants to use that space. So then you end up with kind of a, you could potentially end up with a kind of a, a hodgepodge of smaller signs that are mounted onto this larger frame. Um, so yeah, I guess the signs being on city property, I guess I would have hoped that there'd be a, a little bit more. Oh, there we go. There it is right there. Yeah. 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 So Danielle noted that there was some concern about what might go on there politically. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah and that, that, that kind of got me thinking a bit, you know, also if this is something that, you know, we're looking that, I guess this gets renewed a, a year after year or is it? It's no. Like, no, it's, I think it's ongoing, Danielle, if you wanted to address that. Yeah, so, so it's a permanent, um, these, this would be permanent if it's approved. Um, the other thing is that the, the city under the Municipal Act has no ability to um, uh, regulate any sort of freedom of expression. So, you know, any changeable copy is all freedom of expression and the city has absolutely no ability on any sign, whether it's on our own property or on the other property, um, on private property to control freedom of expression. So if we're going to enter into um, uh, an encroachment agreement to permit these signs, then the person who we enter into that agreement with will have the ability to um, post whatever kind of signs they want. Mm. Freedom of expression always trumps everything. <laughs> mm. So is this, would this be sort of like the same kind of, uh, policies that apply to billboards, like older billboards where you can still use the billboard and post on a billboard, but you can't erect a new billboard. Do you know what I'm saying? I do, yeah. They, um, if there is a, a legally permitted billboard from a past bylaw, 
that was allowed to be constructed, then yes, they would be able to continue to use it, even though billboards are now prohibited in the sign bylaw. Right. Yes. If if the Falstaff Center were to be sold and turned into something else, would the encroachment agreement continue for the new owner or is that something that they have to renegotiate with yeah so usually agreements have a clause in them that any successors or assigns um, assume the agreement um, so they would be bound to whatever the the previous property owner has entered into so is that like to me if you look at what the Falstaff Family Center does, I don't think we need to worry that they're going to start putting anything really inappropriate up because they're a community based group. I, but if they were to sell it, could we end up with somebody who's going to put advertising up there? Yeah, that would be my only concern in terms of just I don't think sure. they're going to do anything, but a successor might. Fair enough. Um, I think we should um, note these um, concerns in our response. Um, I'm not sure if that's, as Daniel said, it's freedom of speech trumps all. So, you know, it's, um, it's a concern. I think it's also shared, it sounds like, uh, by council, so members of council. Um, but in terms of our input um, and the impact of these um, on a designated building, I think that um, we're all relatively supportive, but um, have concern about the number and the size of the signs. So I think that's what should be going back then to, to the committee, that we would perhaps ask for the Falstaff Center to come back with um, less if we could. Hi, is that Kelton? You, are you calling in? Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm on the line now. There's some technical difficulties. My computer was not running right. We've all been there. All right. Um, I don't know if you heard what I just said. Yes, um, so I can go to the applicant um, and see if there's something that uh, with a lesser signage um was it smaller signs as well that you guys were wanting um possibly slightly smaller and lesser because at this point when you look at you've got two small signs at the ends then two big ones then two other big ones in the middle it does look like it's ringing the property a bit with some fairly large signs so um just less mass i guess and um maybe you know try to cut down on the number um Maybe less mass will do the trick. Um, but just right now, if you look at that site plan, it's really quite ringed with these with these placards. Um, so just just a little less, a little quieter. Is it, that is might that might impact that might impact any potential for you know large political signage circling the building. Yeah. Is there a suggestion from this committee that um, I can take them that we wouldn't have to come back to committee? We we could say that um, they agree to the terms of this of the heritage committee, um, and that you would be in support of that. Um, this committee does not meet again until September. So there is a time frame on um, us seeing this again. It would be a couple of months from now. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure. Um, maybe input from folks. This will then go to subcommittee and then go back to council. I imagine correct. But the council will also not be meeting in October. So um, having to see this again would would delay certainly delay this question probably into November. Danielle? Yeah, if I may, um, what if we suggested um, three signs, the, the long vertical one, or sorry, long horizontal one in the middle and the ones on either end. Um, and so three instead of five, the reason that they want that long um, 
horizontal sign in the middle is because they already have some banners made up that fit that frame that they want to be able to reuse. So um, if you get rid of the, the flanking signs on either side of that, then it sort of opens it up a little bit more and it won't look like billboard row as Robin and I called it. Yeah. It's a, I good think that's... it's a good term. We're going to coin that now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. But but so if you if you keep that okay. one sign and then keep the ones on the end, then perhaps that would appease everybody because then they can still advertise, you know, the shows that Here for Now Theater are putting on or what the Multicultural Association is doing. Plus they can do, you know, the Indigenous um, uh, signage or the climate change signage or whatever else they have that's already been made up that is, is meant to fit in the frame that they've already proposed. Okay, that makes sense. And if we can then, Kelton, if we can just say these are our suggestions and please go ahead using these suggestions, then we're not delaying things well into the fall. Yes, that makes sense to me. Thanks, Danielle. Good point. I think we should pass the motion with that recommendation if that's what the um okay like to reduce it from five to three um, with the with yes the so um what we'd like to recommend is the signage be reduced to three signs and that there will be the middle and two flanking signs um to to fit what they already have um and that we it, we don't need to see this again if they take on those suggestions. It's okay. worded, worded better than that, Casey, but um, I do need a motion then. Can I have a, um, thank you, Robin, and a seconder. Barb, Barb, Barb sorry, you're sitting in the dark, honey. Um, all in favor? Thank you. All right. Kelton, thank you very much. Thanks for staying with us. Thank you for your time. Sorry for the delay no with the uh, technical. No problem. Great. Thank you. Have a great evening. Okay. Have a good night. Okay, perfect. Thank you, everybody. Um, we'll move on to business arising from our previous minutes um, and our first item is the blue plaque and james anderson awards update uh brian uh is not here this evening but barb is and just to update everybody we had our first blue plaque presentation for uh richard manuel at 138 well street on may 18th um and it went very well it was a it was a lovely um event it didn't rain which was a big deal because <laughs> it rained every other day that week and we had this outside actually um sort of in the driveway of 138 well we had um members of the manual family there we had members of uh john till's family we had um uh ken kalmuski's brother we had a bunch of musicians that had um known the manuals. Um, it felt like a family reunion. Barb and Brian attended, um, as did Jamie Cottle, who um, was a complete fanboy, let me tell you. Um, but we also had um, uh, the deputy mayor, Martin Ritzma, who came and presented the plaque to the, um, the family, uh, the homeowners who were thrilled to death. And then we just had it mounted last week. Um, Jack went and mounted it and did a lovely job. The pictures were sent out to everybody. I also sent out the link to um, the Beacon Herald's coverage online because they had lots of pictures. Um, so it was a very successful event. Uh, we also had people from the um, archives who attended and the museum as well. The museum was very helpful in um, some of the information they provided too, because they had just done in the summer, last summer, um, a whole um, uh, sort of display on, on Richard Manuel. Um, and so uh, it was it was quite lovely. Barb, I don't know if you want to weigh in. I just want to say that, Cambria, you did a fantastic job with your speech. Very well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, thank you. So we have a second blue plaque coming up. 
Um, this one is for um, Dr. Palmer Rankin. It is going to be also at noon on June 28th. That time um, was dictated by the availability of John Nader, who is our MP for this region. And our recipient, um, Dr. Palmer, was also an MP and then a senator. And so we thought it would be um, fitting to have our current MP do the presentation. So um, Mr. Nader is available at noon. Um, the mayor and deputy mayor will be attending. This is gonna be at 198 Church Street. Again, we have invited the folks from the Museum and Archives who've been very helpful. And everybody on this committee is, should have received an invite and is more than welcome to come. I, I know for some people it uh, can be a difficult time um, if you're actually having to be in the office, be at work somewhere. So apologies for that. Um, but we also had to work around the travel schedules of our homeowners who seem to get about a lot um, to places like England. So um, looking forward to that one. Um, please respond to Casey if you know that uh, you can attend. And then finally, we have the James Anderson Award. We're, we're getting all of our awards finally done. So James Anderson is the award for um, so the blue plaque is the award for somebody associated with a, a site here in Stratford. The James Anderson Award is something we do every year, and that is for um, uh, renovation or preservation of heritage. And it can be built heritage. It can be um, both commercial or residential. We have garden heritage, um, quite a number of them. In this particular case, it is going to Bruce Whitaker for the renovation of the Perth County Inn, which is right across from the courthouse there at the very end of Ontario Street before the bridge. And that was put forward by Patrick O'Rourke. And so we're looking for a date in July and it's either the week of July 10th or 18th. Um, if you have a conflict, if you're going to be away um, on during that time, please let me know. Bruce Whitaker said he's pretty open. He's not going anywhere. We'll have it there probably on that deck that they have built out. And uh, again, we'll be inviting the same people as the blue plaque, as well as Pat O'Rourke and his wife, et cetera. So, um, please let me know if there is any kind of conflict that you have, because it would be great for everybody to be able to, to attend. This one hopefully will do at the end of the day when there might be a bit more flexibility for everyone. So any questions about those? We might be able to have a drink at the Perth County Inn. All right, okay. Um, Barb and Brian are on the committee with me, so um, we will be keeping in touch with everybody as soon as we nail down that date. I'm going to try and get it back out to everybody by the end of this week so we can put it in the calendars because it's not that far off. All right. Um, Destination Stratford audio tours update. Barb, do you have anything? I don't, other than I have looked and I noticed that the videos were still not been posted, so I'll have to get back to her about those. Okay. But nothing else otherwise. All right, thanks. And I don't have any updates for our community partners and projects. Um, I did meet with a potential community partner um, this week, but that's more of a stay tuned situation. I should have more information for everybody in September. And so that brings us to 5.4, which is an update on the Perth County Registry Office. I'm going to defer to Danielle and Alyssa. Is there any update? I have nothing. Yeah. I think we may have to wait till um, the new council and mayor before we see an update on that property. Um, I just think, Danielle, you, you use the phrase lame duck council at this point. <laughs> well, that sounds a little harsh. I understand that starting projects now for council is going to be very difficult. Um, moving forward or with the mayor. So I'm assuming that might be uh, the reason why nothing has happened. Um, so the next item is the national, uh, yeah, nope, it, oh, it's our old friend, 265 St. David Street. Okay. <laughs> so um, 
265 St. David Street is the Kevin Larson owned building that used to be called the White House. Um, and our ongoing um, situation there was with the removal of the windows and replacement of windows that we um, asked them to remove, which they did. The doors that are there now are uh, the old doors that they painted white and put there, but they have not been properly installed. I met with representatives of Larson Properties and we discussed some alternatives. And in fact, there was a building at 313 St. David with a very similar um, set of windows over the door and of a very similar vintage. And the suggestion was to um, replace the older doors with that kind of look and feel. And that would absolutely, um, I think we all thought would be a compromise. So we came to um, an agreement. They left, I left. Uh, we were waiting for a new permit application. And then a week later, um, Larson Properties put the building up for sale. So Alyssa, I don't know if we have more to add on that, but. Oh. Um, so my understanding is that our uh, building department staff continue to be in conversation with um, Mr. Larson's staff and that we've encouraged them to submit a new alteration permit so that we can formalize that and get the input of this uh, committee on what they propose to do. Um, that is all I have by way of updates other than that dialogue and that reminder that they need to apply for that permit is ongoing. Okay, thank you. So that's what we've got. Um, and then now um, the National Accessibility Week. Barb, did you wanna give an update on that? Oh, and Jeff, um, well, Jeff and Jeff, Barb. Jeff, yes, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just- I've talked oh. enough, you go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> Sorry. You both look yeah. fabulous on the videos. Well, thanks. I, I, I think uh, uh, Barb did a great job. She uh, did the voiceover at the beginning of the video that um, I was featured in as well. So um, I think the uh, majority of the work is on her shoulders. But uh, I, it was a good opportunity uh, for me to um, to uh, be part of it. I, I, I really wasn't sure of the of what was being asked and that's why i was stumbling through my script uh, as much as i was but uh um it i think it went well and i certainly getting the input from the uh accessibility um, point of view looking at the way that uh heritage reconstruction or can be implemented i think was really positive and i think uh, at the end of the day um Ideally, it will open people's minds up to the possibility of, of both having a heritage building and uh, accessible building. So I, I think it was a, a really good step and I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a multitude of other buildings in town that we can uh, you know, do next year. So. Yes. Well, I thought it was great. I sent the links out to, to this committee. I don't know if you had a chance to look at them. Um, but I have to agree, I think it was a great partnership. And I'm sure this is going to be a, an annual thing. So, um, you know, now you both have some experience. Um, I think that we could engage um, that committee a little earlier and do the same thing next year and continue to move that forward. So thank you both for, your, for your, all your time with that. It was great. Um, and the next one is the Ontario Heritage Conference. Now I have not uh, registered for that and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able now to attend it. Um, my question was, Laura, are you going to be attending through work? No, I'm not. Um, okay. uh, just uh, still kind of um, getting over being sick and it's yeah. just a few days away. So um, no, I'm not gonna be able to attend. Yeah, I thought if you weren't feeling well, that might be the case. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's any interest in attending or whether the registration is still open, but I do put it out there to, to folks um, if they're interested in going. Uh, we still do have money in the budget for this. 
if you are. So please let me know um, and Casey know, um, it, you know, if you feel a last minute urge to go to this. All right. Any questions on any of those items before we move on? All right. So we will move next to the uh, designation um, subcommittee um, and talk a little bit about an update on the Avoncrest property. Um, Alyssa, if you wanna just talk about where we're at then right now. Sure, thanks Cambria. So a staff report has been prepared on Heritage Stratford's resolution requesting council to designate the Avoncrest property. So it's currently in the internal review queue um, to be on the agenda for the June 30th Planning and Heritage Subcommittee meeting. Um, so I did um, ask Cambria if there were um, a member or two of Heritage Stratford that could attend that meeting to speak to the matter. Um, and my understanding is that there'll be representatives from the Healthcare Alliance there as well. Okay. I personally am available to dial into that meeting. Um, I'm going to see if Howard, who is the author of our, of our report is available, but anybody else from this committee, I think was also free. Um, if, you're, uh, if you are free, um, please let us know. Um, so it's at 4.30 on the 30th, 30th, yes, of June. We, we had a meeting, um, uh, Councillor Ingram, myself, and Howard had a meeting with the hospital uh, to to get a further update on the on the property. Um, Danielle and Howard were not able to attend our last meeting, so it was a chance to get caught up on that. So um, Andrew Williams and Francesco um, were there to answer our questions, and um, again, it was a very cordial meeting. Um, I think they were reasonably transparent in um, getting a little bit more information out of them about their timing, about some of their development um, conversations, situation, wishes. Uh, we didn't really move the ball any further ahead, but um, they did share that they want to move quite swiftly on this, although they're not going to sever that building until March of 2023 in terms of severing off the uh, utilities um, for it. So there's a little bit of time there to maybe work with them on something. Um, Danielle, feel free to kind of share some of your thoughts um, on that conversation. Yeah, they, they were pretty clear that um, they're, they're really focused on spending their health care dollars in the um, health community and that they're focusing on um, health and wellness for that property and that they have had no interest whatsoever. Um, it has been very clear to them that if the building was demolished, the property would have some interest because um, it is worth more <laughs> without the building um, on it for potential developers. They also um, talked about the cost of remedial work. Um, they have done a phase one environmental and it did come back clear. Um, they've also done an abatement report. So um, the roof is going to need to be uh, repaired if they don't move forward with the severing of the utilities and the demolition of the building. The roof alone is uh, $2 million. And um, there was another $1 million. I don't have my notes. I think, I think it's the roof is $1 million and the demolition costs were two, uh, two million, yeah. including the hazardous materials rem removal. removal. Because of course the place is just full of asbestos. Yeah, yeah. Um, they also talked about uh, the need for, there, there's a couple of partners that they've been talking to. Um, they talked about long-term care. They talked about um, some offices for medical practitioners. Uh, they talked about the need for surface parking um, because structure parking is just far too expensive, which is really unfortunate because that is going to take, about, take up a large component of that site. Yeah. Um, but the, it, I, think, I think the 
end result is that you know they they will fight designation and uh, demolition of the building is where they are going to proceed. Um, they did talk about having so, some sort of like heritage recognition corner within the new building so that you could have you know pictures of the old building. You could have potentially like a video walkthrough or a fly through. You could have some of the brickwork and you know uh, windows or doors and recreate something like that in um, so that when you walk into the main foyer of the new building, then you sort of experience the history of the site. Um, so some sort of commemoration area within that that new foyer of the new building is sort of the way they're leaning. But I think I think the rest of it you covered really well, Cambria. Thanks. Yeah, it was. Um kind of the same conversation. Um, the other point made, and this is something Daniel had brought up privately, was when there's a, the building for development is rather unfortunately situated on the property and it's limiting their options. So we had talked a great deal about integrating a facade into something new, um, but there seemed to be some, some issues around that. So they are aware of the designation request. We made it clear that that's the, the duty of this committee to, to do that kind of work um, and that uh, we were going forward with it for that reason. Um, so that's where we're at. Um, they do have some partnerships that they're looking at. They could not disclose who they were because of NDAs. But they do. That's one of the reasons they want to move quickly. Um, is that's you know they said basically if they could if they move now, they have definite opportunity to to do something with that. So um, unfortunately, I don't know who, but that's the way it is. Laura. Yeah, I just I just wanted to uh, bring up that you know if this indeed you know goes forward and the demolition is 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 approved, um, I'd like to see if as a committee and if we're agree in agreement that we have some input into how this building and site is commemorated. Yeah. Um, it, it sounds as if, you know, the, the uh, pro current property owner is, uh, you know, interested in that. But I, I'd like to see us as a committee have more input into how that happens. You know, if if indeed this gets to demolish and it's not something that we want to see, it would be great if we had more ability to shape the commemoration. And um, I, I like the idea of it being internal, but, you know, sometimes it's nice that it's external so that people going by can see. Uh, they don't have to go into the building to, to see the commemoration of what was there. Um, so I, I guess my point is being that I'd like to see us have more input into that if indeed it, it is approved for demolition. Um, I think those are really great points um, and well taken. So yes, I think that's something we will reach out and ask them about. And given the nature of our conversations with them at this point, I think that they would welcome that. So um, Francesco has actually previously worked on a building where that in fact happened, where a demolition happened, but in the newer building, they had built out a space and a sort of um, a, an area that commemorated the older building. This is down in Etobicoke. So um, I think that um, that is definitely a message we can uh, take to them. So thanks, Laura. All right. If there are no further questions on that, I'll move to the non-designated properties register and Miranda. Sure, thanks Cambria. Um, so I have a few updates for you folks. Um, so last Tuesday, June 7th, we launched the Engage Stratford page for the, um, primarily for the phase two properties that were um, passed in the council resolution in 2020. And so, we also sent out um, information packages and letters on that date as well. And the virtual open house will be open until July 6th. And that's also when the opt-out date is as well. And, and then another note is that a staff report has been prepared for the Heritage Stratford resolution. Um, to move along the phase three properties. And that's intended to be brought to 
Planning and Heritage Subcommittee on June 30th. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. That's really moving along, finally. That's great, thanks. Uh, any questions for Miranda? Okay, I know somebody who got her letter. So, <laughs> she's, and she's not opting out. So, so there, um, so great. All right, um, I don't think we have an update from the designation subcommittee as Howard is not here. Um, so we will move that um, to our next meeting. Uh, we do have the development services report though. So um, hopefully everybody got that and was able to have a quick look. Um, Alyssa, anything to add on that? I don't think so. No, I don't think so, Cambria. I think we've already touched on 265 St. David. So I think that's likely the one that has the most interest around it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only other one would be the, um, the Erie Street property, um, but I think that will come back to this committee in September um, with some of the changes on that building. So, okay, great, thanks. Um, so for new business, does anybody have any new business that they'd like to bring up at this point? Well, I have, I have two um, new businesses. Um, for those who missed it, um, Alyssa is uh, moving on and uh, will not be with us anymore. Um, a great loss for the city and for this committee, but I wanted to thank you very much from Heritage Stratford for all the work you've been doing. I think you should apply to sit on Heritage Stratford if you're not working for the city. I mean, come on, now you know all about it. Um, but wishing you the very best um, and, and enjoy your summer and um, being with the, with the little ones. That's terrific. The best time to be with them. Yes. Thank you very much. And I also wanted to note that um, based on our um, motion back in January. This is actually my last meeting chairing Heritage Stratford. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody remember that meeting? <laughs> I was hoping you were going to bring it up. <laughs> yes. So, um, so we do break till September. And so the agreement had been that I would stay as chair and, and be as chair till June. It's June, people. And then there are three meetings in the fall, September, November and December, there is no October meeting because of the municipal election. Um, and so currently I am chair and Brian is um, the vice chair. I was really hoping to talk to him or at least have him here tonight um, because we were thinking that um, we could possibly just sort of switch roles and he could chair the meetings in the fall. I will be on the committee until the end of the year, but I not going to be in the chair position because the whole reason for making this switch was to have a little bit of succession planning um, moving um, into the fall. And then, you know, my last meeting will be December. So that had been the discussion we were going to have. Brian is not here right now. So uh, technically, um, I think anybody can step up to chair the meetings. Um, it's, it's, you know, the chair doesn't have to chair. It can be anybody that we, we designate to chair that specific meeting. So at this point, um, does anybody have any input on, on having the vice chair be the first, at, at least chair the first meeting? Or is there anybody who, you know, do you have any alternate ideas on this? It's a very new plan. This isn't usually done. Um, so um, please, you know, share any input you, you have right now, um, if you have any. Apparently not. <laughs> oh, Barb. Barb in the dark. Um, personally, it matters not to me who runs the meeting and maybe could we leave it up to you and Brian to decide? Yeah. 
the easiest thing to do is to switch the roles. It doesn't need a motion. Um, it can be something that that just happens um, because the vice chair, usually that's their role is to backfill the chair. So I will um, reach out to Brian, have the conversation with him. I expect to see him actually uh, on the 28th at the Blue Plaque Awards and, and hopefully again at James Anderson. In fact, I'd like to see everybody. Um, that would be great. And um, so we'll, we'll settle it before then, and obviously before September. I will be still on the committee, um, but like I said, the idea is a bit of succession planning because this is my sixth year. Uh, we do have term limitations of six years. So um, I just think as kind of the longest standing member um, other than Danielle, and I think Jake, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a good, good couple of months to do a handoff. So any, any questions? Thoughts before I uh, move to an adjournment? All right. <laughs>